there has reportedly been a tangible rise in female travellers seeking solo adventures in recent years. And in today's edition of Issues and Insiders, we delve into how, why and where the world's women are travelling by themselves. Do stay with us. Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Issues and Insiders. It's Wednesday, September 25th here in South Korea. I'm Min Sun Hee. Today, we touch upon the latest travel trends among women who are reportedly seeking to venture beyond borders by themselves. For this, I have Kim Hyo Jung, the founder of Nomad Ha, an online platform for female travelers. Hyo Jung, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. I also have Beatrice Baccarini, an advocate for gender equality, currently working with the Gender Issues Program at the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Thank you for having me. And you have graciously allowed me to call you with the English pronunciation of Beatrice, <laughs> right? Yes. All right. Hyojung, let's begin with you then. Let's start off with details about Nomad Ha, including your reasons for launching this social media platform and the services it offers. Yeah, so Nomad Ha, it's an app for solo female travelers. And we really believe that women can see the bigger world. And our mission is she can travel anywhere. Today I wore this t shirt. Uh, I started this during actually a pandemic era uh, after my experience of going through something not really welcoming in Italy while I was traveling solo. So basically what happened, I was doing a service called the couch surfing, stayed, staying at one host family's place who had over 200 positive reviews. I was sleeping and a man, uh, the son of the family, he actually entered into my room and he masturbated while I was sleeping. So this was a big shock for me. And later I found out that there are many women who have gone through the similar experience or who are hesitating to travel solo for this kind of experience. So I was telling myself, okay, why don't we create a supportive community for female travelers to let them know that, well, there are a lot of women who are traveling solo in the world. Um, think of Nomad Her as a TripAdvisor and Bumble BFF for female travelers. We have three main functions. First, you can meet other female travelers like Beatrice uh, for going to Busan. Second, you can share tips and ideas from women's perspective. And last but not least, we organize women-only travel camps by partnering with women-owned business in travel sector. Right, I see, good to know. And Beatrice, as an avid traveler yourself, what do you believe are the merits of the presence of such a platform for female travelers? Well, I think that apps like Nomader uh, can offer several key merits to female solo travelers, and uh, such as like Nomader creates was able to create a community of women uh, supporting each other and sharing their experiences, but also sharing very useful information and piece of advice in order to travel safely. Um, these networks are fundamental in overcoming isolation and uh, fears related to solo traveling. Um, not to mention that uh, personal safety is the second obstacle women face when they decide to travel solo and it's second to higher cost, uh, which is crazy to believe that a logistic reason is the first one and the second reason is already related to a gender norms. Um, According to another research by Peer Research Center, 65% of women feel safer when they know that they can access online information and apps like Nomader. Uh, so I think that this is what Nomader is made for, creating a safe space for women. Right, indeed. And Hyojung, your app, your platform, it also hosts in-person gatherings, I understand. And you have one plan for this coming weekend over in the southern port city of Busan. What's the purpose of these in-person gatherings? Mm. So you're saying it's an application platform, but actually we see this, this is not just an app. Uh, one user told me, Hyo, you are not creating an app, but you are creating a movement for women to dream bigger and go and see it, the bigger world. That's what we see. So the reason that we're organizing these offline events and like meetups is because we really believe in the value of inspiration 
when we encounter amazing, inspiring women from all around the world. For example, not only Beatrice, but there will be over 1,000 women who are flying in actually for these three-day events in Busan. And it's a great moment where you will feel so much inspired and you will realize that, wow, there are so many women who are keep traveling, discovering, going into adventure, and that's the purpose. So that's why we are partnering with Busan City uh, this year. Also, it's a great opportunity for the city to really promote their brand as welcoming and safe city for solo female travelers. And the main reason is when you say a certain city is safe for solo female travelers, it means it's safe for everyone, for grandmas, for women, mother with children. So that's what we are seeing. Right. Beatrice, you've been invited to speak at this year's gathering over in Busan, taking place, of course, this coming weekend. That being said, in your opinion, what do you suppose or how does travel itself empower women? Well, I think that solo traveling is itself a tool of empowerment for women. Uh, when a woman decides to solo traveling, um, she also decided to step out of her comfort zone, challenge gender stereotypes, and uh, discover new dimensions of uh, independence and self-determination. Uh, the freedom of movement is often limited by social norms or cultures, and that's why I always try to uh, balance like my trip and try to find solutions and factors uh, that can that can allow me not to be just an observer but also to be actively engaged uh, that's why anytime I travel I try to find activities uh, mainly with local communities or uh, refugees or um, that allow me to make a change. So I feel empowered, but also I can support the local communities when I travel. Right, for sure. Hyojung, pundits say that there has been a tangible rise in women travelers in recent years. How do you explain this trend? So we think that these trend of growing women population traveling solo all around the world is actually thanks to women's economic status rise as well. Uh, according to our internal data, for the past five years, the number of solo female travelers has increased 500 60% and we see that it's actually increasing annually. It's exponential. And the main reason is because people now see, especially women, they don't see solo traveling as just a traveling, but they see it like Beatrice said, it's a way of personal development. It's the moment when you realize that, wow, I can do everything. I can meet so many new people. I can just take an adventure, step out of my comfort zone, and I can see the world even though there is no my family, boyfriends, or someone coming along with me. So we see this as a movement related to women's economic and social status rise and very positive signal. And what would you say, Hyojung, appears to be that is the general travel preference among women, women travelers? Mm. So, Sonia, I remember we talked about your recent trip to Europe, for example. And, um, right, we talked about it before the program. Exactly. Um, and what we see is people, especially like Beatrice, me, we don't want to just do sightseeing. Now we want to do something more. And female travelers, they prefer to do an experience related to their core value. Let's say, and no matter her, we are now partnering with women owned the surfing shop in Busan. And we related that we see that actually it's really empowering for other female travelers to see female surfer as she's one of the very few surfers, female surfers in Busan. We are now partnering with a uh, Henyo uh, travel brand in Jeju Island, which is called the Myeongnang Henyo. And we are program making a female diving program. And this is also deeply rooted and uh, related to the history of women's resilience related to Henyo. So everything what we are organizing at Nomad Her and actually female travelers are saying, you know what, this is not just a sightseeing going to Seoul Tower. Actually, I'm experiencing something new, more deeply related to my core value. And we see that it's a big change right now.
Right, a trip that is both uh, rewarding, of course, and also mm. very educational. Uh, Beatrice, Korea is reportedly emerging as a popular tourist destination among female uh, travelers in recent years. What are your thoughts regarding this reality? Oh, I think there are many factors, starting with safety. Uh, being a woman is the first thing that I notice about this country. Um, like Korea registers a very low crime rates. Um, then I would mention a unique blend of culture and uh, modern attractions uh, from ancient palaces to villages and of course, how not to mention K-pop and K-drama. Um, but also I recently noticed having traveling here twice in two years. Um, the fact that it's not, uh, the, the visa for instance, is not a requirement anymore and until the end of this year. I think it was a good point for tourists who want to travel to South Korea. Um, and I would mention, yeah, of course, the <laughs> K-beauty and uh, uh, all the hype around it. Right, for sure. <laughs> when was your first trip to Korea? Mm, I've been to Korea last year, the first time. So last year In was August. your first trip here? Yes. Where did you visit? What were your impressions? Um, well, I had this strange yet comforting feeling uh, to feel home already, and I was never been here before. Um, but maybe because I planned this trip for so long, so I already knew a lot of activities and things to do here. Um, I've been last year to Seoul, Busan and Jeju, and I always organize my trips myself, so it was kind of overwhelming because I wanted to visit everything. Uh, still can't decide what was the best part of the travel last year. Um, but yeah, I found, I found Korea, uh, well, I don't want to say anything wrong because it's nothing wrong, but I had this feeling that Korea is very young, vibrant, and playful, meaning that it has a, Korea is a very uh, smooth way to speak to my inner child. Uh, when, like, back in Europe, we take everything too seriously, while here you see this big plush keychain on bags. And uh, I don't know, like, it's a nice feeling, you know, to feel like I can be, I can, wear whatever and uh, also I don't feel observed here. Like in Europe, we tend to stare at people, everything we do, everything we wear. So here you can be whoever. And uh, it's a nice, like I will, I will be always grateful to Korea for this. Beatrice, how has the presence of the uh, app, the online community that uh, Hyojung has created, helped you in planning your trip to Korea? Oh. Well, that was easy because I asked a lot of uh, information, especially about Jeju Island. Um, I wanted to know if it was easy to travel there without a car. And the answer was no. <laughs> so I was language a barrier? In your uh, no, here? not at all. Not at all. Right. No, it, was, it, it, it is a very easy to create a community on Nomather and uh, also meeting people. I met a lot of women around the world and uh, mainly locals, which is also very useful when you travel to a new country. Right, for sure, for sure. Hyojun, what advice would you care to share with female travelers venturing solo for the first time? Yeah, so I really want to say it's normal to be nervous. Uh, before coming here today with Beatrice, we were saying Beatrice was like, oh, yo, I feel so nervous. It's my first time to be on television. And uh, I think it's normal. Um, a lot of people I've seen, it seems like they feel pressured that they need to be perfect for everything. And when you know that it's your first time going on adventure just all by yourself, that's normal to feel like something is not going really as what you planned or you feel like, oh my God, am I missing something? Will I be all right? And I really want to let people know that if you feel nervous, that's a great positive signal because it also means that you are taking another step out of your comfort zone. And second of all, I really want to encourage 
every single woman in the world that they should travel solo at least once in their life. Why? Because it's completely different. Based on my experience, I feel like what, when I travel solo different parts of the world, I feel more empowered. Um, I meet always new people. I'm surrounded by new people. It gives me new inspiration. It makes you to be more open. You can take your time. You can go to a restaurant. You can go to a place that you really wish to go. And it allows you to go deeper about your inner self and asking yourself, what kind of person I am? What type of travel do I like? And I see solo traveling as a very condensed version of your life. That's what I want to say. Well, that's a beautiful way of putting mm. it. Hyojang, this is an impromptu question. You talk about how you've encountered stories of inspiration among those women travelers as you've ventured beyond borders. Could you tell me about one particular story of inspiration perhaps I that have touched you? Tons. <laughs> I have tons. Um, it was back in 2020, and uh, I almost had a burnout. Uh, I worked too hard for no matter. I was literally working every single day. And there were two countries that people actually told me, oh, he'll be careful, which was one, Morocco. Another one was India. So this time I went to Morocco in a surfing place called Tamrat. And there I met, I still remember her name. Her name was Marta. She was from France, 76 year old. And she told me it's her first time ever traveling solo with a very small car and a tent on top of her car. And she was learning how to surfing at the age of 76. And that was really inspiring. She told me, yeah, listen, my children are all grown up. Now I want to see the bigger world. My husband recently passed away, but they cannot stop me to see the bigger world and keep traveling. And she was telling me, I told her about Nomad Her, and she said, this is so amazing and inspiring because if people know that someone like me who is 76 year old traveling solo, someone like 18 year old traveling solo, someone with hijab on the wheelchair, every single woman traveling solo, that's already a big positive signal sending to the world. And yeah, that was a very a inspiring moment story. for me. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, love it. Right. Beatrice, how have your solo trips around the world perhaps shaped you as a person? Um, they shaped me more as a gender advocate, I would say, because I um, decided to uh, always uh, do activities with locals when traveling, especially women. Um, I understand I, I saw a different point of view of equality, even mixed into different cultures and traditions. And it's overwhelming to see how gender inequalities are different based where you're going. Um, I've, yeah, I've seen how factors like culture, religion, tradition, and influ influence gender roles, uh, and also opportunities for these women. So it's something that I learned is that gender is a lens and can be applied in whatever you do. I apply gender in my job, I apply gender when I travel. So I think that traveling in this way helped me also in order to be a better traveler and a better human being. And this is an impromptu question for you as well, uh, Beatrice. You've traveled quite extensively across the world, I believe, and what would you say is one safety precaution that female travelers can keep their eye on as they seek to venture solo for the first time? Well, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with and uh, just trust your gut. Right, trust your instincts, of course. Yeah. Right. What about you, um, Hyojang? What piece of advice would you like to share with people traveling solo for the first time? Mm, um, I think sometimes we forget what's the true uh, meaning of living. So if someone asks me, Hyo, what it means for you like traveling solo as a woman, I will say, I always say, I feel like I'm breathing. Um, sometimes I think like in our daily life, we forget why we live, what makes us happy, like what kind of value I really care and think it's important. And whenever I travel solo, I feel like I'm breathing and that's a life for me. And I want to let people know that take your rhythm, inhale, exhale, and try to really let just yourself free and go 
and maybe sometimes it's true like some we never know who we're gonna meet on the road and try to really find out that unexpected joy and I believe that's what we call as life. Right. Hyojo, we're looking ahead to very uh, beautiful autumn weather this season, given the prolonged heat wave we've seen this year as well. What might be an ideal plan for a trip for a solo female traveler to Korea this time of the year? So I know I'm very prejudiced, very biased, but I strongly recommend everyone, please come to Busan. Uh, Busan is my city. I was born and raised in Busan. And I think it's the best way for people to enjoy both ocean and mountain. If you want to go hiking, you have mountains. If you want to go to surfing, you can still go surfing during October. Um, another second reason is uh, we've talked about public transportation and actually transportation system, depending on where you go, sometimes it's very limited. But because of the fact that Busan is still a metropolitan city, you have access to metro, bus, night bus. So it's very safe for solo female travelers as well. And I think that's what I strongly recommend all the solo female travelers, not only go to Seoul, but please come to Busan. Busan is a beautiful city. Of yes, and is. amazing food. Right, for sure. <laughs> Beatrice, what is your suggestion for a female traveler seeking a refreshing experience here in South Korea? Because earlier on, you talked about the importance of making sure mm. that these travels are also educational. Yes, absolutely. Well, I just came from uh, a night from the temple stay. Highly suggested. Um, I chose the temple in Yeonju. And uh, actually, I had the room and the with four more girls, and they were all solo female travelers. Uh, so it was very insightful and uh, peaceful. Uh, but another activity that I would suggest is to go to Jeju and uh, have an experience with the Henyo, the sea women of Jeju Island. There was a totally different kind of empowerment because those girls, th those women are great and they re literally are making a difference. Not to mention that they're also UNESCO World Heritage. Right, indeed they are. And you've yet again shed great light on their efforts as well. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Beatrice, <laughs> thank you so much for your time today. Thank and you. And Hyojung, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Right, well, that ends this edition of Issues and Insiders. Thank you for watching. See you same time tomorrow.